morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all to the Peradini University International Nursing Research Session 2022, conducted by the Department of Nursing, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, University of Peradini. Let's all together walk down the memory lane. 6th of April 2018 was a historical day to the Department of Nursing as we were the pioneer institute in Sri Lanka to conduct the very first international research congress in the country. Even today, we are continuing our efforts to seek compassionate researchers around the globe representing diverse health fields. So without further delay, we are going to commence the event with the university anthem. any auspicious event with the light in the oil lamp as we believe it will bring us divine blessings and assure positive energy to our event. Thus we symbolize the traditional lighting of the oil lamp now on the screen.
Dear distinguished guests, your presence at this special occasion is a great honor to us. This cordial invitation is extended to the organizing chair, Peradeni University International Nursing Research Session 2022, and the head of the Department of Nursing, Dr. Malshani Patiratna, to welcome you all on behalf of the Department of Nursing. Our chief guest today, Prof. M. D. Lama Vansha, the Vice Chancellor, University of Peradeniya, the guest of honor of Peradeniya University International Nursing Research Sessions 2022, Prof. Aisha Holloway, Professor of Nursing Studies from the University of Edinburgh, United Kingdom, renowned keynote speakers, distinguished invitees, paper presenters, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to you all for being with us today virtually to commence the Peradeniya University International Nursing Research Sessions 2022, organized by the Department of Nursing, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, University of Peradeniya Sri Lanka, in collaboration with Niigata University Japan, the University of Edinburgh, United Kingdom, and Johns Hopkins School of Nursing, United States. On behalf of the organizing committee, of IPERNS 2022, it is with great pleasure I stand here today to welcome our chief guest, Professor M. D. Lamawansa, the Vice Chancellor, University of Peradeniya, and the guest of honor, Professor Aisha Holloway, Professor of Nursing Studies from the University of Edinburgh, United Kingdom, to Peradeniya University International Research Sessions 2022. Also, I warmly welcome the keynote speakers of IPERNS 2022, Professor Wendy Morley, Griffith University, Australia, Dr. Aya Saito, uh, School of Health Sciences, Niigata University, Japan, Professor Catherine Ling, Johns Hopkins School of Nursing, United States, Professor Tongs Fawcett, School of Health in Social Science, the University of Edinburgh, United Kingdom, Professor Don Elizio, Luzero Prison, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, United Kingdom, who are joining with us today virtually. I'm also pleased to welcome the Deputy Vice Chancellor of University of Peradeniya, Professor Terence Madhujit, Deans of the Faculties, including the Dean, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, Directors of the Postgraduate Institutes, guests and invitees. All those who are attending virtually to the Peradeniya University International Nursing Research Sessions 2022. We are honored and pleased that you have made time out of your busy schedules to attend this conference with us today. The Department of Nursing, University of Peradeniya organized the IPERNS 2022 with the intention of providing a platform that brings together national and international nursing researchers to communicate with each other while addressing national and global healthcare challenges, giving a particular attention to the field of nursing science. It covers a wide spectrum of presentations under the theme, Discovering the Paradigms Beyond Caring Hands. IPERNS is expected to create a space for collaborative links among academics, researchers, and nursing professionals. Nursing research in clinical setup aids nurses in determining successful best practices and improving patient care. Peer review study findings can help to clear up old misconceptions, pave the way for new care behaviors, and develop new methodology, all which improve patient outcomes. Moreover, scientifically sound, well-designed studies have a significant impact on present and future professional nursing practice. IPERNS 2020 provides great opportunities for the presenters to communicate their research to a wide and interested audience, receive feedback on their ongoing work, learn from other presenters, and expand their professional network. This is the second time Second International Nursing Congress, proudly presented by the Department of Nursing, University of Peradeni, Sri Lanka. Uh, and though it was commenced as biennial event in 2018, 
we were unable to have the conference in 2020 due to the global pandemic of COVID-19. This year, there are 23 abstracts presentations upon completion of double-blinded review process. I strongly believe that the contribution of these papers will immensely beneficial for the researchers, practitioners, and policymakers, especially in nursing and healthcare. Apart from the abstract presentations, today's conference is featured with a guest speech and keynote speeches from globally renowned speakers who share, discuss, and dissect significant new development and scientific discoveries that will have an impact on the future of nursing science and other related healthcare fields. Without taking much time to wind up my speech, I would like to thank all the people who have worked tirelessly in planning and organizing this event. At this juncture, let me take this opportunity to thank our international collaborators of the conference, Niigata University Japan, the University of Edinburgh, United Kingdom, and Johns Hopkins School of Nursing, United States, for their invaluable contribution to the success of this event. I truly believe that IPERNS 2022 will have a great impact on all the participants through mutually beneficial information exchange and that it will be fruitful and worthwhile of your time. Once again, on behalf of the organizing committee of IPERNS 2022, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you who are joining with us today virtually to the Peradeniya University International Nursing Research Sessions 2022. Wish you all a great day ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam. The Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, University of Peradeniya, was the first faculty in Sri Lanka, which was established with the aim of producing nursing and allied health professionals. It is not a secret that the progress of this Faculty of Allied Health Sciences was fraught with tremendous difficulties. Dear Madam, we are grateful to you for your guidance and dedicated work to bring us where we are today. We cordially invite Professor MD, MLDK Atavara, the Dean of the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences to address the gathering. Good morning, Vice Chancellor Sir, Head Department of Nursing, Guest of Honor, Professor Aisha Halloway, the University of Edinburgh, United Kingdom. Keynote speaker, Professor Wendy Moyle, Griffith University, Australia. Deputy Vice Chancellor, Deans of the Faculties, Directors of PG Institutes, Registrar, Bursa of University of Peradeniya, the academic staff members of the faculty, chairpersons of the sessions, presenters, organizing committee of the IPERS. 22. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored and delighted to welcome you all to the Peradeni University International Nursing Research Session, IPERNS 2022, organized by the Department of Nursing, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, University of Peradeni. As the Dean of the Faculty, I would like to congratulate the Department of Nursing for organizing the second nursing research conference named Peradeniya University International <coughs> Nursing Research Session 2022. The IPERNS 2022 proudly presents this year under the theme of discovering the paradigms beyond caring hands with the partnership of several institutions such as Niigata University Japan, Johns Hopkins School of Nursing USA, and the University of Edinburgh, UK. So the graduates and scholars will present their research findings in this conference, thus making it a great occasion for the participants to share their scientific experiences. The total number of abstracts present today is 23, and the abstract titles ranges from health promotion, nursing practice, and nursing education. Prior to the conference, two pre-Congress workshops were arranged with the participation of foreign experts, 
I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all distinguished guests, including keynote speakers, collaborators, and sponsors for, who gave their tremendous support to make this event a success. I hope that this year's conference at Peradenia will result in new knowledge, partnerships, and we're networking with professionals in this international gathering to learn about the latest trends in nursing. I hope that you will have a fruitful discussion today on searching the paradigms in nursing care and practice. And I extend my sincere appreciation to the members of the conference organizing committee towards their tremendous efforts to make this event a success. Further, I wish all participants of the second nursing research conference, IPERNS 22, a productive and enjoyable experience. And I wish you all a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. University of Peradeniya is one of the eminent universities dedicated for higher education in Sri Lanka. Heading such a leading institute is truly a momentous task. We are fortunate to have had a leadership in our institution that was always supportive and encouraging for every endeavor in our faculty. It is my great pleasure to invite our chief guest today, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Peradeniya, Professor M.D. Lama Wansa, to address the gathering. A very good day to all of you. Uh, Professor Ilyatabara, the Dean, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, Dr. M. Patiratna, Head Nursing, Guest of Honor, Professor Aisha Holloway from the University of Edinburgh, UK, Keynote Speaker, Prof. Wendy Molly from Griffith, University of Australia, Deputy Vice Chancellor, he is at another function. Deans of the faculties, directors of PG institutes, Registrar University of Peradeniya, the Bursa, librarian, faculty staff, chairpersons, presenters, organizing committee, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted and honored to participate at the opening ceremony of Peradeniya University International Nursing Research Session, IPERNS 2022. It is organized by the Department of Nursing, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences. As the Vice Chancellor, I would like to take this opportunity to greet and thank all the speakers, paper presenters, and participants. I would have welcomed you physically here, if not for the current crisis we are facing. I also would like to compliment the chairperson and members of the organizing committee, IPERNS 2022, and all other parties for organizing this event in keeping with the standards and the traditions of the university, which has established over the decades. This is the second time that the Department of Nursing is holding a conference of this nature. I'm also aware of the contribution of several international players, the School of Health Sciences of Niigata University, and the university has been helping the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences from its inception, and it's represented by Dr. Saito, and of course, John Hopkins School of Nursing, USA. We have Catherine Ling and the University of Edinburgh. And I think Professor Tong Fawcett has already joined. And also from uh, Griffith University, uh, Professor Wendy Molly, Australia, and London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, Professor Don Lisro Prison and their contribution to this conference, thus making this is an intercontinental conference. And thanks to many others who are helping and joining uh, via Zoom platform. The theme of the conference, the discovering the paradigms beyond caring hands. Discovering the paradigms beyond, the, beyond caring hands is interesting and topical. 
as a healthcare professional and a practicing surgeon, I know how important that aspect for my patient is. The need to identify and clarify the paradigms of nursing research has been one of the top issues facing the nursing discipline. There is great philosophy behind all these things. This theme, your theme today, illustrates the pivotal role that the professionals as well as researchers in the field of nursing have to play in advancing their knowledge and in practice and research. And especially in an era like today, the global pandemic and so many other emerging threats threatens the very uh, existence of the mankind. As we understand the paradigms are set of beliefs and practices shared by professional groups and communities and researchers, there are sets of beliefs and practices which in turn regulate inquiry and therefore the discovery within disciplines. In this instance, in this example today, it is in the field of nursing. The Department of Nursing efforts to bring this most important subject of discovering the paradigms, that is our beliefs and the practices and the models for the discussion tables is praiseworthy with the participation of galaxy of eminent researchers from elsewhere. The paradigms related to your profession are many as I can see, and I'm sure more are yet to be discovered, especially in the local context. We need to remember that these paradigms are characterized by ontological, epistemological and methodological differences in their approaches, thus having a direct influence on conceptualizing and conducting research and therefore the knowledge construction. In keeping with the theme, the workshop conducted yesterday on systematic review is most relevant as discovering paradigm starts with inquiring and assessment of existing knowledge to identify key substantive contents and gaps. Systematic review is a culture that we are trying to nurture here in this university. I believe it is essential that paradigm discovery need to be viewed from the de development of nursing profession, practice and knowledge in Sri Lankan setting also, as I mentioned earlier. To achieve that very purpose as stated in the theme, I hope you explore the evolution and influence of various research paradigms on theoretical and disciplinary development in nursing and fundamental similarities and differences of such and the reasons for those similarities and differences in multiple settings to get the best out of international experience translated to Sri Lankan practice. Linking the knowledge creation efforts and processes with international platforms is an important task and you have really understood, clearly understood that. And I'm glad that the Energetic Department of Nursing has taken solid steps to address it and go in that direction. I hope that you will collectively continue to work on this theme beyond the two-day conference and make the strides that are necessary to discover the paradigms during the coming one or two years. And then you will be able to deliberate about discovered paradigms, especially in the local settings at the next conference. You have the fullest support of the central administration to walk that path. 
not least because I happen to be the founder, head of the Department of Nursing. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I wish IPERNS 2022 a fruitful conference and hope you will join us at the next conference and hopefully we'll be able to host that in face-to-face -face format. Thank you once again and have a pleasant conference. Thank you very much, sir, for your speech. Now I'm going to introduce the guest of honor for Peradini University International Nursing Research Session 2022, Professor Aisha Holloway, Professor of Nursing Studies, co-founder and co-director of Edinburgh Global Nursing Initiative. Let me bring you all a brief introduction to Professor Holloway. She is the chair and founder of the Scottish Alcohol Research Network. She is an adjunct professor, John Hopkins School of Nursing, United States. Also a trustee board member, Florence Nightingale Foundation. She is the program lead research and evidence for effective practice for nursing now global campaign. Also, she is an advisory board member, Harvard Global Nursing Leadership Program, an advisory board member, Nursing Now Challenge Program. Further, she holds a number of advisory and board roles within the United Kingdom and internationally. She was awarded with Cabal Star Award in 2019. Also, she was awarded with Scottish Nursing Midwifery and Allied Health Professional Research Awards in 2015 and 2017. Dear Madam, it is our great pleasure having you at us with today. While thanking you for accepting our invitation, we invite you to share your thoughts today. Thank you so much, everyone. Lovely. Well, hopefully you can all see me and hear me. Um, I'm delighted to um, have the opportunity to be part of your conference. And thank you so much for giving me that honour. This from the beginning. Okay. Now, firstly, congratulations to all the colleagues at the University of Peridonia for managing to put this conference on. I'm so sorry we can't be there in person. I know it's been hugely challenging for you, but you made it with determination and resilience. I will carry on with um, no further delay because we have got a lot to get through and I'll hopefully keep to time. The interesting thing is the discussion around paradigms. And I've actually, without knowing that um, paradigms were going to be a focus, entitled my presentation today, Nurses and Midwives as Drivers of Change, a New Paradigm. And I want to talk to you a bit about where that idea has come from and the importance of nursing and midwifery as a workforce. My colleagues here in Edinburgh send their very best wishes to you, and we are delighted to continue our collaboration and partnership. And here we have our beautiful city of Edinburgh with the archway into the old medical quad where nursing studies is um, situated and some of our students graduating and you'll see Professor Tonks Fawcett up in the top corner with our students and then we see the gorgeous country of Sri Lanka and I took these photos when Tonks, Professor Tonks and I visited back in 2017. We have tried since then to return but unfortunately because of the challenges that we have faced globally we have been unable to but we're delighted to be part of your fantastic event here today. My presentation will focus really on the contribution of nursing and taking us back to the very essence before we think about our contribution to research, our contribution to clinical practice, what is it that nursing actually brings and what is our unique contribution? And there was a report published in 2016 led by Lord Nigel Crisp around the triple impact of nursing. So that intimate hands-on care, the professional knowledge and the person-centered humanitarian values. 
And alongside that was the idea that there was an economic impact, there was quality of care, there was a contribution to global health. And global health and global public health will be a theme of the presentation. And to refresh your memory, because this was the most important initiative campaign that we have ever seen in our time as a nursing profession. And it has really changed the landscape. And the key people involved, Lord Crisp, Sheila Cloud, Dr. Ted Ross and Annette Kennedy, were really the people who spearheaded this idea and focus on the impact of nursing on health, on society, and how we can be leaders, service designers, and advocates, agents of change for improvement. The aims of the campaign looked at greater investment in the workforce. What were the central health policies? What was nurses' role in influencing? So rather than just delivering care, we were actually driving and influencing health policy. We were at the table having those discussions. That requires leadership. That requires a strong evidence base of research. And so far, we have implemented the research and evidence of others. But what we are seeing now is a huge driver for nurses leading their own programmes of research and having the evidence through a nursing lens. And I think that's where we're seeing this new paradigm shift. We see it in other countries. In America, they have very strong leadership in nursing research. Less so in the UK, it's emerging, but it's still very difficult. And in other countries, we are seeing the same um, challenges. So we want to show and demonstrate our evidence base and how we can inform and share practice from that. The path to universal health coverage is a key theme of the World Health Organization and demonstrating an investment in nursing and the midwifery workforce in particular, we can see to ensure that we can achieve universal health coverage, we will need nurse led clinics, we will need nurses working to their full scope of practice, we will need more specialist nurses, the development of advanced midwifery services, primary health care, so that everyone in the community has access to that, and the health promotion and disease prevention. And here we start seeing the emergence of public health again as a primary driver for achieving the sustainable development goals and universal health coverage. Health promotion and disease prevention, a very strong theme probably back in the 80s that has somehow been lost because of the increase in technology, treatments, advancements, and then we were taken by surprise, not by everyone because it was, it was I guess, in some quarters, we knew there was going to be an epidemic, a pandemic upon us, but I think we were caught unawares and many health systems, workforces, governments were not prepared for our COVID challenge that we have hopefully started to manage, but come through. However, we have to be vigilant. Thankfully, and um, as a purpose and a function of the Nursing Now campaign and support from the ICN and the World Health Organization, we saw nursing and midwifery pushed to the fore. 2020 became the year of the nurse and the midwife, but it was also hugely significant because of the pandemic. And then we see a once in a generation opportunity to put nursing and midwives at the center of global and health policy. It was a celebration of nurses and midwives that our key role in improving health and health care would only be achieved if we were invested in, in terms of education, practice, career development and research opportunities. And here we have the photograph of Ted Ross announcing 2020 is the year of the nurse, a truly important and significant day. And here we are with these young nurses and the reason I'm including this slide, these were nurses from all over the world who had the opportunity to attend the World Health Assembly. Now we see medical students attending the World Health Assembly every year. And this was the first time that early career nurses were given this opportunity. And that is another shift, paradigm shift for us. No longer is it essential for nurses to work for decades working their way up the career ladder. No, we need to take early career nurses now, we need to take student nurses and we need to give them the opportunity. We as 
the elderly state women and men need to lift up our early career researchers, give them these opportunities, help them see how policy is made so that they can understand their position and flex their own leadership skills and develop them. And here we are outside the United Nations. And these nurses were the talk of the United Nations World Health Assembly that year. And you'll see here, we were sitting in on one of the um, sessions. And again, when have nurses ever been able to have that opportunity? This should not be a one-off. This should be a every year event. It should not be that nurses are having to make a special case to be at these global um, events at that global level, engaging with the policy debate, presenting the evidence base. And you'll see again here, our nurses met Tedros. They engaged with him, talking to him back in 2019. Look at their faces, the joy of being able to be with our fantastic statesman and leader, Dr. Tedros. And again, those of you who are really interested in public health, Sir Professor Michael Marmot, the godfather of inequalities, meeting with our nurses and giving them the opportunity. So what we're seeing here is opportunity. Let's give young nurses opportunities. One of the key outputs that came out of the Nursing Now campaign was the State of the World's Nursing Report. And what we found is something that we already knew really, that there was a great need for more nurses. There's a huge global shortage of nurses across the world, but we didn't realize what that looked like in detail in a report pulled together looking at the um, data from the countries. So what this has given us is the baseline from which national policy and dialogue can be driven forward around our workforce to look at what we need in nursing. Accelerating progress to the sustainable development goals, unlocking the investment in nursing and the health workforce and dealing with gender equality issues. And I'm not going to um, say this was my phrase, but I think this is the phrase that you, if you leave this presentation today, you remember data increases and informs dialogue that then leads to decision making. And data is what we get from our research. We can take that evidence, we can have dialogue with policymakers and governments and stakeholders, and we can influence decision making with it. So that is why data research is key. And that was uh, Jim Campbell, who's the director at, um, of Human Resources for Health at the WHO. That was his key phrase for us during the campaign. So the nursing campaign looked at why we need 6 million additional nurses, why we need to collect health workforce data, looking at nursing mobility and migration and the ethical elements of that. And we're seeing that hugely currently within um, nursing here in the UK at the moment and very intense debates going on there about how we do that. Nurse education and training programmes. Nurse education and training programmes must have research at the very core from day one, from year one, not at the end of the programme, but at the very beginning so that nurses understand why research and evidence is important. Similarly, research and governance, very key early on for nurses to understand what their role is and about global nursing, because what we have understood is that the world is a smaller place now. We are much more connected. So what happens locally impacts globally. And this is why we need partnership and collaboration, similar to what we have here with our colleagues at Johns Hopkins, Griffiths, um, our other colleagues who have really helped Peridinia University move forward. So we can see a list of areas that came into the State of the World's Nursing Report, and we will hopefully see a future State of the World's Nursing Report so we can understand the progression. So the core message of the Nursing Now reporting campaign was that nurses are vital agents of change who can transform, drive forward health care. Governments who want to see health improvement based on the research evidence must ensure that nurses are invested in and are very core to the health system. There has been a significant focus on health systems, but no health system can work without its workforce. And nursing is the largest health workforce globally, reaching every element of the community. 
So for me, my job, interestingly, was to um, try and evaluate the Nursing Now campaign and what the impact of it was. And that was a hugely challenging and difficult job. And I certainly didn't do it on my own. And my wonderful colleagues, um, Barbara Stilwell, who was the executive director of the campaign, really helped get that report over the line in, in the end. Um, and along with colleagues, Lord Chris, Mary Baroness Watkins, Professor Sheila Clough. But the story of the campaign, and here's the thing, it's all right to have data, but how do we translate that data into a story that policymakers understand? And there's evidence in some great literature around um, from colleagues like Catherine Oliver, um, who talk about how do we use research to engage with policymakers? Now, they don't want 30 pages generally of data. They want one or two pages with a story, with some data, but something that speaks to them. They see lots of things coming across their desk and we have to understand how we can write policy briefs. So I teach my students and my master's students in my course how to write a policy brief. That is their assessment and their assignment. And also they give a presentation, a pitch of that policy brief around a particular health challenge that is happening in their country. And it's really interesting to see how do you define the problem? How do you articulate it? How do you create that sense of urgency? How do you present the economic case for it? What is going to be the return on investment? These are all things that nurses need to understand. So it's the art and the science. We are nurse scientists. That's what we need to call ourselves now. And the other story of the Nursing Now campaign was a story of coalition, of coming together of stakeholders, multiple stakeholders across different settings, nurses associations, governments, regulatory bodies, universities, nursing students were core, on the ground, social movement created. And if we want to see any change, that's what we're going to have to do. We are going to have to engage with the public, the community that we serve. They are our biggest asset and we can create great political capital from that asset. The Agents of Change, just a summary of the things that were achieved during the three year campaign. Who would have thought a chief nurse at the World Health Organization, Elizabeth Eru, a year of the nurse, a state of the world's nursing report, the first one ever nearly 800 nursing now groups across 126 countries, influencing policy, influencing investment, going to the World Health Assembly, papers published where nursing now was mentioned and other reports, hugely important reports, the WISH report, gender and leadership by Johnson & Johnson and our final report, Agents of Change. And here's some of the ways that that change was achieved. And it was achieved largely by those local groups at grassroots level who were not told what to do, but were said, what is at it at your, at your local hospital? within your university, what are the issues that you want to influence and be part of it, to have a dialogue with? And they engage with their chief nurse, they engage with their nursing association, with the support of the Nursing Now campaign. And that's where we saw the future. And what we have now are the strategic directions of nursing and midwifery. But one key thing I want you to understand from the research that we undertook um, with our colleagues, um, Dr. Ahmed at Newcastle University, he's now at Stirling University. We tried to understand why we had some great traction with the Nursing Now campaign. And what we saw was that social media was key. And we've seen this with um, the pandemic, with the COVID pandemic, we've become very digitally um, astute. Um, I wouldn't say I was the best, but definitely um, I'm much more digitally capable. But what we can see here is the trajectory the trajectory of the campaign in 2017, there were a few influencers, a few connections. By 2018, then into 19 and 20, we can start to see this huge social network. And we did a social network analysis, and it was a fantastic piece of work because it helped us understand the brand. What brand are we trying to put out there? What is our brand? What's University of Peridinia's brand? How do you use social media? 
And what was very interesting, and we're writing the paper for this at the moment for publication, is that we ended up with a brand that was very similar to some of the largest companies in the world without any significant funding other than the great funding from the Burdett Trust. We had influencers and what we can do now is harness those. Who are the influencers? Who do we need to make these connections and networks? But I thought a really important um, issue to raise around the power that social media can give us also in terms of sharing our research and evidence and connecting. So one of the things I'm really interested in is how do we manage to make things a global health priority? So for nurses, how do we make our profession a priority? How do we make our voice a priority? And there's a great scholar, an academic called Jeremy Schiffman. If you're able to read some of his papers, I would really suggest you do so. Um, has connections with Johns Hopkins, et cetera. And um, really, I, I really enjoy reading his work. And Professor Jill White, who's emeritus at the University of Sydney, she has written a great paper around the framework that Jeremy Schiffman talks about in why nursing now was able to garner the traction and the influence and position that it was able to do so. And Jeremy Schiffman talks about global health networks, webs of individuals and organization linked by a shared concern for a health condition. He's looking at health conditions, but for us, it can be about our professional impact and professional position. And how do we ensure that challenges faced in low and middle income countries specifically get that global priority and position within their governments. And what we find is that there are key actors who develop coalitions and he has a framework. So seriously, give that a read because these actors are not just in government and in policy. They are in charity sector, they are in business, they are in finance now, they are in digital technology. They are the community, the public, the professionals, our regulatory bodies, our educational institutions. These are all people and actors who need to come together around a concerted effort and common good of particular priority areas for them. And also what we need to understand is the policy environment. What is going on at the time? And now I would say there is an opportunity more than ever. We have seen the impact of the pandemic. We have seen a global uh, fiscal challenge that we have. And here in the UK, we are seeing inflation rise at the moment. And there is a real concern of a, a, a future, perhaps not recession, but the next few years of being fiscal constrained. How do we then invest in a workforce? How do we invest in health when we are economically challenged? We need to not only engage with our health ministers, but we need to engage with ministers across different portfolios, because they will all be looking to the government for their investment area. And we want to ensure that health, health systems and health workforce is being invested in and areas specific to disaster preparedness, whether that's man-made or natural, resource scarcity is a huge challenge and a pandemic and epidemics. We need to make sure that we have a public health system that is ready to respond and deal with this. Preparedness is significant priority for us and a workforce that's able to do that. So the work of the campaign, just as I lead to the um, final area, is that the campaign's over, but the story continues. The work is not finished. And I just want to give you um, a little insight into the Nursing Now Challenge. It's a, it's a legacy of the nursing campaign. Please join it. We have the Global Strategic Directions for Nursing and Midwifery. Again, please read this. This is a key document that the World Health Organization has produced. It gives us a framework and it gives us a direction and governments will now collect data and look, use this as the marker for which they are able to progress. We have nursing groups across the globe. We have the Harvard Global Leadership Program that I'm lucky enough to be involved with. There is great legacy from this. Nurses are a force for global health. People can lead the way. And nurses at Harvard, who would have thought? 
Um, I just want to give you a very short insight. I know I'm overrunning slightly about our global nursing initiative, where we want to advance education, evidence, innovation and impact of nurses globally. Here's the key thing we found in Nursing Now campaign and the other documents that come out. We have to really evidence our impact. Whenever we're starting any new intervention innovation, we want to make sure we have an evaluation embedded within at the very start so we can demonstrate impact. Here you'll see our collaborations across diverse communities in Edinburgh that we are drawing on a whole range. There are more to add and we want to continue. And Peridinia are one of our, our um, partners and um, people in our network. We have something called the Ignite Programme, and I just want to show the diversity of the work, not just clinically, but also in terms of research that we are doing to demonstrate the impact of nurses in low and middle income countries, in Liberia, in DRC, and in Uganda, funded by the Burdett Trust for Nursing. So here we have task sharing. Task sharing is hugely underrated. I don't like the title task sharing because this is not a task. So we have midwives and qualified obstetrician clinicians undertaking surgery. In Liberia, there are very few um, obstetrician consultants. There are rural areas that um, can't be reached. So we have along with a fantastic um, charity, the Maternal and Child Health Advocacy International, are supporting the education and training of these midwives. And they are undertaking cesarean sections and surgery. They are saving lives. And we are now looking at the evidence base and bringing the data together to publish the evidence to demonstrate the impact. Similarly, we are starting our work in DRC. That's very challenging because of the context of that country and the pandemic. But we are looking at how we support our nurses there to then support women who have experienced complex sexual trauma. Again, there will be an embedded evaluation within that programme. And finally, our palliative care um, programme with fantastic nurses um, who are already out there working in refugee camps. And the most amazing thing, taking us back to the impact of stories, yes, we have the data, but when asked around the research, it wasn't conducted by us, it was conducted previously to us being involved. And they went back to the ward and they said, what is the biggest impact of training nurses to be able to give analgesia and to give pain relief at, in end of life care and they said the silence and they were asked what do you mean and they said because we don't hear patients screaming in pain now that is a hugely powerful statement to make more powerful than any data so we need stories Florence Nightingale did it she told stories along with her data so just to end, if you've got um, any time, please have a look at the Nursing Now Challenge. You'll see what's available there. It's a great, great platform. They have a mentoring um, program there. They have Global Solutions Initiative that you can be part of. It's a wonderful place to go and be part of a global community. And I sit on the board, so I'm a real advocate for it. Get active, get involved. There's Lisa Bayless Platt who runs it. And I hope you've really enjoyed um, my little insight into what's going on in the world. Thank you for your time and um, good luck for the rest of your conference. And I'm so glad that I've got up at four o'clock in the morning to present today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam, for your motivating speech. We are honoured with your presence today. So please accept our heartfelt gratitude with a small token of appreciation, which is displayed on the screen now. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Honorable gathering, we have reached the conclusion of the ceremonial program. We cordially invite the co-secretary of Peradeni University International Nursing Research Session 2022, senior lecturer, Dr. Damianti Dasanayake to propose the word of thanks for the inauguration session. Good morning. For the Vice Chancellor, University of Peradeniya, Professor Aisha Holwe, uh, Professor Wendy Molly, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Deans of the Faculties, Directors of Institutions, Heads of Departments, Chairperson of the Sessions, 
administrative officers, distinguished delegates, academic and non-academic staff members, presenters, participants, ladies and gentlemen. We are reaching the end of the inauguration ceremony of Peradeni University International Nursing Research Sessions 2022. So I feel privileged and honored to propose a word of thanks for this morning event. Let me start by expressing our deep and heartiest gratitude to the chief guest of today's ceremony, Professor M.D. Lamavansa, the vice chancellor of our university, who in spite of his busy schedule, accepted our invitation and participate in this inauguration session. Thank you very much, sir. Then I extend my grateful thanks to our guest of honor of the inauguration session, Professor Aisha Hore from the University of Edinburgh, the United Kingdom. Madam, we thank you for your very insightful address. Next, on behalf of the organizing committee, I extend my sincere thanks to Professor Wendy Morley from Griffith University, Brisbane, Australia for delivering the keynote speech. Thank you very much, Madam. Also, I take this opportunity to extend my warmest thanks to all the international collaborators of this event. We are likewise grateful for the presence of the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Terence Majudith, for making your participation at our program. I also wish to extend my deep appreciation to deans of all the faculties and directors of institutions for being with us today. I also extend my sincere thanks to the Dean, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, for her cooperation in making this event a grand success. Thank you very much, dear madam. Let me express my gratitude to all the administrators officers of the University of Peradeniya. I wish to express my gratitude to all the heads of the departments for extending all the support whenever requested to make this event a success. I shall be failing in my duty if I don't express my gratitude to all academic and non-academic staff members of our faculty who contributed their share to the success of this event. This day would have been meaningless without the presence of our presenters and participants. On behalf of the organizing committee, I congratulate each one of them in advance. Importantly, I must thank all the chairpersons for accepting our invitations and join with us today. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Well, an event like this cannot happen overnight. The wheels start rolling weeks ago. It requires planning and a bird eye for details. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated people from Department of Nursing who know their job and are result oriented. So I owe my thanks to my co-secretary, Ms. Sandra Daratnaika, and the other organizing committee of this program. Before I conclude, I must thank our head of the department, Dr. Marshani Patiratna, for her expert and able guidance extended as the chairperson of this session. Thank you very much, dear madam. Once again, I thank everyone for your cooperation and wish you all to have a fruitful research session henceforth. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, madam. Before concluding the session, I have a few special announcements. After that, we'll have our technical session. So the technical session will run as two parallel sessions, session one and session two. So please use the appropriate link to join each session. At the end of the technical sessions, please join with the closing ceremony using the separate link provided. And also we are happy to announce three best oral presenters of the hall session by the end. So wish you all the very best for your presentations. We'll start the technical session by five minutes. To mark the end of the ceremonial events, let's respect to our national anthem. Have a good day. Sri Lanka Mata, Sri Lanka.